Welcome everyone. My name is Antonio Nardella and I'm the community manager at the IOTA Foundation. I would like to thank you for joining us and joining the enabling trusted and decentralized supply chains with Zebra Savannah and the IOTA Track and Trace Ledger API. This workshop is for developers. Um, today, today, we will get an overview of Zebra Savannah RFID technologies and how to use the IOTA track and trace API in the free sandbox with an example use case related to the digitization of international trade. Let us introduce our ecosystem to a new world of business opportunities and applications thanks to the combination of IOTA and Zebra Savannah. Uh, first things first, we have a brief agenda for our um, for our workshop. So uh, we will have uh, Jens, Jens Munch from the IOTA Foundation talking about the vision and uh, the business cases. Then we will have um, uh, an introduction to Zebra, Savannah and RFID and barcode technology by Dino Gregorich from Zebra Technologies. We will have a smart, uh, small break of two minutes to catch your breath. And then we will conclude our workshop with the Track and Trace Ledger API with Jose Cantera from the IOTA Foundation. Um, and information to the participants, uh, please post pertinent questions to the workshop to YouTube. We will collect the questions and publish answers to these questions in a later point in time. So let us get started. Uh, Jens Munch, hand, uh, Head of Global Trade and Supply Chain, will now kick off the workshop by giving us an introduction into the vision and business cases around Zebra Savannah and the IOTA integration. Jens, please take the virtual stage. Yeah, thank you very much, Antonio. And uh, thank you for, for setting this up. I'm very excited about today. Um, so I just have five minutes to uh, to to set the scene before we kick more into the developer side of things. But what I wanted to say um, is, you know, very few things. Um, maybe two words about the IOTA Foundation, which is a non-for-profit foundation. Um, our mission is, uh, and what we work on, is a world-class um, research and development of DLT technologies and with, with focus on, on, um, on what we call the Tangle. Uh, which is our uh, distributed ledger technology. Maybe Antonio, if you go to uh, next slide. And I don't want to go into details on this technology here, but I thought it might be interesting just to mention a few things that is relevant for why we talk about supply chain um, and applications to supply chain. And, and if some important thing is that we are not a blockchain, we are distributed ledger technologies, and that comes with with some advantages uh, to supply chain use cases. Um, first and foremost, I think the scalability is important. If you look at supply chain use cases, we are talking many transactions and we're talking lots of actors being involved and you gotta be able to do many transactions. Uh, so the main net of IOTA runs around a thousand transactions per second at the moment. That's That could sustain most of the supply chain cases I've seen until now. Um, another important part is that, that we don't have miners in our technology. Uh, the transactions are fee-less and that's important uh, to predict the business case, the, the cost of setting up a service and ensure uh, there are very low costs that can be sustained in supply chain use cases. Um, and then another thing I wanted to mention just here is the fact that, that because we don't, you don't need to own the tokens um, there's no miners, there's no regulatory barriers for setting up supply chain new cases. Uh, so, so that's important. When we then get into more, you know, what is the business business vision uh, for, for what we're going to talk about today? And Antonio, next slide, please. Um, I think we should remember and, and probably most of the audience today would know that supply chains is characterized by the fact that there are so many actors involved in the end-to-end -end of most supply chains. And I think one of the interesting things that has come out of the last year's COVID crisis is that people are starting to understand a little bit more of supply chains. I have heard today, you know, 
normal consumers complain about the Xbox being late delivered and they understand that there are problems in the supply chain for delivery or even more banal things like scissors. I, I, had, um, I had a shop uh, manager explaining me how international shipping works and why things are not in shop. And it's because of the disruptions we're seeing at the moment. Um, we have seen uh, due to the COVID cases, but but what that exposed to, you know, to the rest of us is that, that this is really about track and trace. It's really about supply chains, it's really about how do we coordinate information uh, between those many actors and, and make sure that information can travel between actors from one end of a supply chain to the other end or even to the to the end consumer. So the value of using a distributed ledger is really to enhance the ability to coordinate and to share data and to trust the data. And thus you can provide accountability to, to that data that is shared. Um, who is adding what data and when are they adding that data to, to a supply chain situation. Um, and the distributed ledger um, kind of becomes the transaction layer uh, by providing these kind of things, by providing the immutability of data. That immutability provides a trust in the data, but it also provides the accountability in that data that, that, that the people who's uploading that data, sharing that data or that organization, um, is accountable for, for putting that data in and that, that, is the, that is their version of the truth. It also provides decentralization, meaning that, that you can build business models where you don't hand over control to a central actor, even though you have a whole ecosystem. Um, everyone can manage access to own data and who's allowed to access their own data uh, and so on. And that builds, that's the fundamental that actually allows these new vision that, uh, that many of us see for how this technology can be part of, of changing the future way of how supply chain is, 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 is organized. It's, um, the vision is about ecosystem optimization. It's about keeping fake products out of a supply chain. Um, something when we talk about the upcoming vac vaccination and, and the rollout of that, will be, be, be on everybody's lips, I'm sure. Um, it's about consumer engagement and, and examples like, like uh, medical or food as we had, just the fact that do you know that the temperature hasn't been messed with while the food or the vaccine was, was, was moved around uh, in the supply chain. Um, these kind of information, are critical information, uh, both for businesses involved, but also for end consumers. And, um, and, and by adding a distributed ledger, we can add these capabilities. And uh, and I actually think there's a plethora of new business models that we don't know yet. And uh, and having the audience with us today is really also to engage you in, in co-thinking this space with us. We want to provide the capability, but not necessarily we know all the business models. So um, I'm super excited by the, the, the partnership that we, we're making with, with Zebra Technologies and, uh, and Savannah. Sipa Savannah, um, where, where what we're doing there is we are upgrading an existing technology with, and, and, uh, and capabilities that already exist widespread in the supply chains. We are, we are enhancing in technology. It's, it's not about a revolution. It's about enhancing and making things easy to use and upgrading already existing systems to take advantage of new technologies. And uh, by empowering the CEPA devices, I feel we are not just upgrading, you know, a product, giving giving CEPA size and being a market leader. We actually, I feel, upgrading a whole infrastructure. Um, but I'll hand over now to um, to uh, to the more technical side and and the uh, the educational side of this session. Thank you very much, everyone, Antonio. Thank you, Jens, for giving us a glimpse in the vision and the use cases. Um, I would like now to introduce Dino Gregorich, uh, Principal Solutions Architect at Zebra Technologies. He will now introduce our participants to Zebra Savannah and RFID or Barcode Technology. Uh, Dino, please take the virtual stage. Okay, there. Uh, it says I'm presenting it. Uh, okay, 
Great. Hi, I'm Dino Gregorich. Uh, thanks for joining <laughs> this webinar. I've been invited to talk about Zebra and Savannah and RFID technologies and how we've been working with uh, IOTA to uh, implement their ledger and track and trace system. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Zebra. Uh, Zebra started off many, many years ago as a barcode printer company. And it was that remained that for quite a long time. It's only until the past within the past decade they diversified and uh, started buying into the edge technologies. As we've said here, Zebra has now become an innovator of edge enterprise solutions and partners. And what we are doing is we have mobile computers. We now have barcodes. You know, mobile computers. I'll show you. You know, here's a bar. Here's one. Here's a RFID mobile. We have our, our barcode scanners, mobile printers, you name it. We, we have quite a bit of uh, edge technologies. So we're, we've been uh, working with beacons and RFID for, oh gosh, over 20 years now. And so we uh, recently started trying to cloud enable the edge devices, trying to make uh, capabilities on the edge. Uh, to get to the cloud, to make it easier to implement and access data. So that's where Savannah comes into play. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about me, and then I'll move on to the Savannah piece. Uh, just real quick, I've been a, a developer engineer for 30 years, and I've been working with the, all these devices, as you see, for the past 20. And I've been with Zebra, Motor, I came as Motorola acquisition, but Zebra for nine years. And I'm the solutions architect, and I'm working with, as the, as, as you could say, the product owner for the Cloud Connect for RFID. Uh, so Savannah is a framework that we've created that uh, allows all of our edge devices to be able to communicate uh, easily through to the cloud, where from that point we can do a lot of capabilities. And uh, for example. In this diagram, you see where we have a printer or a mobile or an RFID reader where that data can be captured on the device and not just sent to your waiting database, but it can also be sent other places immediately. So for example, uh, in, in the case of RFID and barcode, we can actually have, when you scan a barcode or an RFID, uh, RFID tag with the reader behind me, it'll go to the the track and trace ledger if I want it to. And we've given it the way to do that through webhooks. So what we're starting to do is bake in our devices, especially devices with, with uh, chips, you know, uh, operating systems, mobile computers and things. Uh, we're, we're baking in some of these Cloud Connect features right up front so you don't have to install any special software. They work right out of the box. That's the idea, that's the goal we're going for. Uh, and so we've started that. We're not done yet, but we're still progressing. Um, and essentially, you could say, uh, basically, there are five things that we tend to look at the most, and that is the label, barcode labels from the, you know the printers. We've got the uh, the barcode itself scanning, and then of course RFID tags. We got an RFID tag here. Uh, beacons. We got plenty of beacons. Here's a beacon. And then, of course, within that, we can get the location so solutions as well. So we're basically taking the physical sensor data and turning it into bit, digital bits to use and consume. Uh, so we've crossed many, many industries from manufacturing, transportation, warehouse, retail. Uh, it's not showing here, but we're also in healthcare, hospitals, clinical care, all those types of things. Anyone, if you've had to be in the hospital, unfortunately, uh, you might see some of our products. In fact, you'll probably see Zebra most places you go these days in the real, you know, in the retail markets and in places. It's pretty, we're pretty much everywhere now. Uh, one thing I'm going to talk about more though is RFID. And we have a, a suite, I'm showing this little slide here that just shows you kind of a handful of all the different gadgets we have that are actually RFID readers, from a mobile RFID reader to a, a fixed one behind me, portals, 
uh, you know, uh, the ATRs, those kinds of things, uh, SNAP, all those can collect RFID data. But then what are you going to do with that data? You have to get it to your system. So it usually requires people to have to write code, write a back end, on-prem servers, et cetera. But what we've done is we made a, uh, we've given the capability, especially with the RFID, that out of the box now you can connect to Savannah and enroll your reader to, to your account. And at that point, you now have a, a pathway to Savannah, Zebra Savannah. And in there, you can generate uh, what we call webhooks. When data comes in from a reader, you can tell it to go different places, you know, at more than one place. And for example, the track and trace, perfect example of that. Uh, so here's how it works, if you will. The barcode fire, I mean, the reader fires off. It enters the antenna to the reader. The reader sends a payload of data in the JSON format up to the cloud. From the cloud, it sends, can send to the track and trace ledger. And then, as you can see from this slide, the, the resulting record has a few pieces of extra data in it, as well as this ID, your transaction ID. So now you can get to that record in the future. So that all can happen without a human touching it and without writing any code. You can do that right now. Uh, so let's get move on to a live demo. Uh, I'll show you how to make all this work. And um, let me stop this presentation and bring my browser over for you to see. I don't have much time left, so I'll try to be quick. Uh, you, what you'll do is you'll need to visit developer.zebra.com. I'm already there. And you're going to have to register yourself. And when you do, uh, you will get an email, you verify, you come back in, and now you have an account. With that account, you have the ability to access various APIs. So um, I can show you some, uh, I'll, I'll focus on the IOTA uh, real quick. IOTA's wrong page here. Uh, I got too many pages up. There it is. This is one of the APIs you can get to from, from our dev portal. And uh, this is what we call uh, an interactive Swagger document where you can actually test the APIs to the track and trace uh, directly off this web page. But how do you get to do that? Uh, well, first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to create an app. So you, once you've logged in, you're in. Now you're going to go. I'll show you uh, how to navigate to that page. You would click your name. Here you go, account settings. You would pick that. You click my apps, and then you view my apps here. And an app is really just an, an aggreg aggregation of APIs that you want to pull together because you're going to get a key to use those APIs. So if you build an app or something that uses printing, track and trace, any other things, you may want to lump all those APIs together and use the same security API key. So I'm going to create a new one. I, you already see I have a track and trace ledger, but but I'm just going to create a new one just for, for you to see. Uh, so you'll click Add New. I'm going to give it a name, uh, New Track and Trace. Um, this is necessary, but you just put localhost here. Now you're going to look at the list of APIs that are available to you. And these are all different APIs that are available. And here's the one we're interested in for this presentation, IO Track and Trace. So then I'm going to create the app. And takes a few minutes, apparently. A little slow today, no problem. Now you see I've got a new track and trace app. So let's go in there. What's in here? Uh, OK, look, there's a consumer key. We call that a consumer key or API key. And this is a consumer secret. You'll need these for different interfaces. But for now, for an API, to use an API from our web page or in your code, you would just have to use this API key. So I'm going to copy it to my clipboard right now while I'm here. So then I'm going to go to that interactive page where, oh, I'll navigate to it. That's right. Let me make sure I can show you how to get to it. Once you're in this your apps page, you can go to Sandbox, click Prototypes. Because this this is real, it's real world, it's real production, but it's a sandbox. We're doing some testing, and we're allowing your our developers to test and kind of play around with our 
technology right now. So I'm going to view details, and that's where you'll see this page. And you can watch the video that we have up here. It's very handy. But what first thing I'm going to want to do is take that API key that I just copied. You'll go to Authorize. Here's where you're going to paste it. Paste that key right there. Authorize. Okay, close. Now I'm done. That's it. So let's uh, let's let's get the let's just try it out. I'm just going to get the version there uh, and hit execute. What will happen is reaching out to the track and trace and it's returned the version we're we're actually accessing. And then I'll go down here. I have some um, I don't have any records right now because I just created that API key. And so in that case, uh, I would go here and I can manually post some records and uh, generate that. But what I'm going to do now, because I don't have any records with this new one, and I'm going to leave that to Jose to show you all how to do all that. What I want to show you is some data from, from this uh, that I already put in there. So it would be not the new one. Um, hang on, where'd it go? I lost it. <laughs> oh, I'm in too many things. Let me refresh. Um, okay, let me go into this one. Oops, grab this one, copy, go back here, go here, paste, authorize, close. So now if I go to the reader, and do a, just a, a get with that API key, you'll see I have two records show up that I put in this morning. Now that was a manual entry, but we've set it up so that the readers can actually do this all by themselves. And we do that under our uh, webhook system. So you would navigate to your webhooks where you can add a subscription. So I've added a subscription already for this reader. It's called IOTA Track and Trace Ledger Demo. Let me just edit it so you can see what I did. And I can help and we can have all this available to you to understand. But what I've done is I've put the API, I've taken the, I keep jumping around, but uh, I grabbed this uh, URL here and I just put it, in here with the ledger and, and with the read API endpoint. And since I need to use an API key, I put that in as the query string, query parameter. And I tell this reader that I have two readers already enrolled. Tell anytime this reader sees data, oh, and I even put in a filter. You don't have to, but I put in a filter. So, because I have hundreds of tags in my office, I don't want to write a hundred tags. So I have a filter here where only this tag will be written to the cloud. So when this tag is seen by my reader, it'll automatically feed that data, just like the, the PowerPoint I showed you. It'll feed that data to the, to the tra track and trace ledger, and it'll be in your data from that point on. I think I about covered everything I was supposed to cover. Gentlemen, any other things I should cover? Okay. I think if um, Jens or Jose would like to touch anything, otherwise I think we're we're good. All right, then, thank Dino, thank you very much for this uh, introduction. Okay, I will now take over from here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we are now starting with a two minutes break for our viewers to get uh, maybe already on the uh, Zira developer page and register. Um, in the meantime, I would like to remind you uh, and uh, remind our participants uh, that uh, pertinent questions to the workshops will be collected and answered in a second uh, stage. So please pass them to or uh, send them uh, over the YouTube chat. Um, for uh, So since we have this workshop and it's just today, of course, you can look it at any time. 
Um, but again, if there are um, technical follow-ups, uh, please, we are inviting you to register to the IOTA uh, Stack Exchange at iota.stackexchange.com. There you can post all your uh, questions about the, the technology, how it works, if there is something uh, you missed in the presentation or you would like to know more. While for business-oriented follow-ups, uh, please write directly to the email addresses displayed on the right-hand side of the slides. So one is iota, uh, jens at iota.org and the other is alex.fryer at zebra.com. So um, it's a good idea to take either a screenshot or write them down right now or uh, later on to uh, rewatch this video. So the break is almost over. Um, in the meantime, thank you, uh, Dino. Thank you, Jens, again, for this awesome start of the presentation. And now I would like to um, give the stage, the um, virtual stage to Jose for the um, track and trace API part of this workshop. So Jose, the virtual stage is all yours. Okay, thank you, Antonio. So I'm going to present uh, now. And um, <clears throat> so I'm going to give more details about the track and trace ledger API that uh, Dino has uh, kindly introduced. So first of all, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am uh, technical analyst and project lead of, in the IOTA Foundation. I've been in the technology sector for uh, 20 years, work as a software engineer, uh, technical product manager, evangelist uh, in different open source projects uh, and communities like Mozilla, Fiverr. And also as part of that work, I contributed to open standards, W3C, GSMA, and, and Etsy. And today I'm going to present more in detail the work we have, we have been doing together, uh, the IOTA Foundation and Zebra Technologies on the IOTA Track and Trace Ledger API. So following up on what Dino has presented, uh, um, I would like to introduce what is the architecture of the Track and Trace uh, Ledger API um, and the implementation of the API. So essentially using the hooks that, uh, that uh, Zebra Savannah provides, we are able to receive all the data from the devices, particularly from the readers, and, and get that data and publish the data into the Tangle. But how do we do that? Well, the data on the Tangle is published through uh, an IOTA stream. So essentially we can organize the data and group the data in an IOTA stream. How do we group the data? Well, the data is grouped by um, RFID uh, reader or by RFID tag. So the RFID tag is the, the, the ID, the ID that you are actually tracking. And uh, to do so, to create these stream channels in IOTA, uh, for those people who do, don't know what are streams in IOTA, uh, streams are a technology, a second layer protocol that allows to group all the uh, IOTA <clears throat> or all the transactions into the Tangle to group uh, them and to create uh, a way to get access to this, uh, these transactions on a link way. So I can get access to all the sequence, to all the audit trade, all transactions. And uh, as a result, we can associate all the data into the tank, all the data related to a tag or to a device into the same audit trail. And the nice thing of our, uh, so this is basically what the IOTA integration service. So it is able to um, translate between a device ID or a tag on an RFID to uh, an stream in the tangle and to publish to that stream or to read the data from that stream. And on the right hand side, we have uh, the important uh, actors in this, in this picture, which are the ISB application. So the ISB application are the retailer, the public authorities, uh, the freight forwarders, 
the pores, even the consumer. And these applications are those who can consume the data through, through the Savannah APIs, through the REST APIs, or even they can consume the data through the Tangle directly using the IOTA strings APIs. And uh, you need to take into account that while you can post or read data through Zebra Savannah, um, um, through the APIs, you can also read data directly through the IOTA streams APIs. For instance, I will uh, sh uh, show uh, during my, uh, my, my presentation at the end, I will show an example of how from a web application you can read the data uh, from, the, from the RFID devices uh, um, <clears throat> directly, directly from the Tangle through the IOTA streams APIs. So, so just to, to summarize, so we have the reader, the Zebra device, we have the, the event that comes to Zebra, Zebra Savannah, as Dino has introduced. That event is posted to the uh, Zebra IOTA implementation of the API. We have the event, the event includes what is the device, what is the PC, which is actually the RFID. And uh, we store the data, we obtain the index, of course, from the, from the, from the device ID, from the RFID ID. Uh, we obtain the, the channel index and we store the data into the tangle. And when the data, we want to retrieve the data, uh, the, the, the inverse process, uh, uh, similar process happens. So we have the device ID, we have the EPC, we, we obtain the, the index of, uh, uh, the, of, of the channel that we want to read and we read the data from the tangle. It is important to understand, as Dino has introduced, that the data is properly separated by API key. So every user of the API only get access to its data through its API key. That's a, a very important uh, point. So now it's time to go a bit hands-on and I would like to do uh, this uh, hands-on work uh, directly with, uh, with Postman. So in this case, I'm going to show you uh, the details of how uh, and, and the API works and what are the payloads that uh, are being used. So first of all, uh, uh, for uh, putting, uh, for obtaining, so when, when, a, when a reader uh, reads an, an RFID tag, detects an RFID tag, this reader is sending to our API this payload. And the payload includes things like the device, the antenna. The antenna is is um, uh, is the uh, um, a component of uh, of a reader in in the way that one reader can have more than one antenna. Uh, it depends on the on the on different zones. There can be different antennas. We have the signal. We have a local time stamp generated by the device. But it is important to understand that this time stamp. Uh, is the device time stamp, but our API is also to going to stamp into, into in the tangled transaction the uh, uh, the time stamp uh, that is generated by the API. So that is very important in order uh, to make the proper traceability. And the other, apart from the device ID, the other important uh, element is the APC. So the APC is what the RFID tag really stores. Okay. And the human read readable um, representation of the APC is a URN. A URN is just a, a URI with a particular format. And this format is, is uh, defined by GS1, which is a standard organization in the, trade, um, in the trade domain. And other information interesting that the reader is capable of providing is the location of the reader. And, uh, using this information, it would be very easy to track what is happening with a particular item in the supply chain. Because every time that item, consignment, or whatever element you, you may think in the supply chain pass through a toll, a toll plaza in any place, uh, the reader is going to, to send to the API a post, and we will receive the post. The post will be recording to the tangle into this string channel into the tangle. So we will be building 
the audit trail of the DAF. And that is what, what I'm going to demonstrate here. So we are going to do it with the device. So it's the webinar device 1639. The antenna ID, well, the timestamp, we can say it's the third, um, the third of December. And um, at uh, this time, and the EPC, I'm going to use this EPC. And the type is the transaction type and the location I'm going to use the same location, okay? So I have a, a, a valid payload now. And what I'm going to do is to simulate what the device will actually, uh, um, actually do. So when the device performs the read of the tag, a post will be generated to, to the RFI, to, to Zebra Savannah, and there it will be received by our API. Then we will be sending um, the data to the tangle. So you will see that the status is 201, uh, which has been created. And now our data is on the tangle. And how we can test that our data has been properly um, <clears throat> stored into the tangle? Well, we can, once it is created, our transaction into the tangle has an ID that we can find in the location header, and we can go uh, to uh, see um, that transaction. So if we paste uh, the um, we paste the transaction ID, you can find that uh, the data has arrived into the tangle. And as I said before, we have the timestamp. This timestamp is the timestamp that any supply chain will take into account because it is the trusted timestamp, not the one that was generated by the device that could be hacked, but it is the, the real timestamp. And here I would like to show you the nice, the nice thing about the, the API because now we have an ID and this is the ID of the IOTA stream channels, which is starting to track this tag. That is a very important point. And also, we have this side key. Why? Because uh, the data in the stream channel is encrypted. And I need, um, it's encrypted. And I need to, uh, you, if, if I want to consume the data from there, I need the side key. Otherwise, I, 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 will not, I will not be able because the data is encrypted. So what I'm going to do now is with this ID and with this ID key, I'm going to show you in the IOTA streams uh, browser that the data is actually there on the tangle. So if I go here to the uh, streams uh, browser, the data is important for you to understand that it is on the depthnet. So, here uh, we paste the, the ID and we need to paste our uh, site key, okay? And if we paste here the site key, we have our data. So we have the webinar device of uh, 1639 and we have our, our transaction on the tangle, okay? But imagine that now this item in the supply chain moves to another place and another device, another RFID reader reads the tag. What would happen? Well, that device, of course, would um, uh, um, read the tag and post a transaction to Savannah and that transaction we arrive to our API, and then we will write into the tangle. So now we have a new uh, device, which is 1643, but the EPC, of course, has not changed because it is the same item. Of course, the time would be probably different. <laughs> and uh, we will send 
this new transaction. The transaction is being sent. The transaction has been sent to the tangle. And now what happens? Now in our stream, in our IOTA stream, we have a new transaction. Of course, uh, um, this is what a different device, but well, what I didn't, I didn't do, and, and it's something that should have happened, is that the location would have been different. Okay, so I'm going to generate a different transaction, and you can imagine that we can build the the uh, <clears throat> the, the the location trail of our of our attack. So imagine that I send uh, another another transaction here, and I can do the same. And here we have our transaction with an, our, our, our um, next uh, uh, location. So uh, it's, it's quite nice that uh, the data can be read directly through the Tangle, through the Tangle Streams APIs. And uh, what about if I would like to know through the APIs, through the REST APIs, all the transactions concerning this EPC? Well, that is not uh, difficult. I have the EPC. And basically, if you do a GET transaction and passed in the, um, as a path parameter, the EPC, I can get the same data that I'm getting through through the tangle. Okay, you will see here all our uh, through the IOTA APIs. So through through the REST APIs, you can see here the device, uh, the first transaction, the second transaction, and the third transaction. Okay, and you will can see that the IDs that appear here are exactly the same IDs that appear here in in, in the uh, in the explorer. So, so that's um, that's an interesting um, uh, approach. Also, of course, you could do the same in a web application. So here in, in Visual Studio Code, I have also left, uh, um, I have here a JavaScript program that I can use that basically, if you know the site key and you know, you know the, the transaction ID associated, you can retrieve all, all the data, the same data that we are getting through through the Explorer. But now let's go uh, to extend a bit, our, a bit our example. So, so essentially, we would like to know uh, um, what transactions has been made with this particular device. Because of course, a device, a reader, can uh, make many different transactions that involve different uh, EPCs. And that's uh, uh, an important uh, uh, point. So I could do this just uh, with also a, a GET a request. So if, if I passed in the uh, path parameters, uh, my uh, the ID of my device, I can get the transactions that uh, on, on which this device has been uh, involved. Okay, so in this case, there is only one read transactions that has involved uh, or, or that has read this EPC, and uh, it happens the same here that. With this ID and the side key, I can't get access to what has been happening with that particular device. So in this case, um, I can go here. Uh, and this is the root. And this is the side key. And I can get the data. So this is what has happened with this device. But now imagine that. Uh, I want to uh, um, uh, do another uh, uh, that now a different item in the supply chain 
uh, is read by this uh, reader and of course a new transaction is generated okay so i have here a new a new transaction that involves in this case uh, a consignment so uh, this consignment and uh, of course it's done today at uh, uh, this time and the location is is different uh, of course no the location should should be in this case if it is the same device should be the same location so this location of course this would be automatically filled by the by the device but for consistency i think it's good to um, add here the same location and now you can know that the epc is different we are now uh, uh, tracking a different kind of item in the supply chain so i can send the transaction with the same device the transaction is there and uh, um, we have uh, um, made another transaction with uh, uh, with this uh, device so this transaction um, can be of course read through our um, uh, API okay and then uh, this is this could be one more time we can go to the uh, string channel this is the idea of the transaction ah. this is the idea of the transaction this is the side key and here uh, we have um, our our transaction with the um, with the um, new um, item in the in the supply chain so uh, this is this is the um, uh, the overview of the things that uh, can be done with the uh, with the api and uh, of course um, i would like to to stress the fact that it is very very easy that uh, an application can exploit this data and aggregate this data uh, very very easily and, uh, uh, and, and and create the track and trace audit trail of an item if that item has an rfid attached to it so so and and we have uh, exploited uh, this in the, in a project that we are developing in in Africa, which is the TLIP, uh, we call it the TLIP project. And, and essentially, what, what we are able is that if uh, uh, this project is about tracking consignments, which are like big packages that are moving between countries uh, in international trade. And the idea is that uh, you can, um, the idea is that uh, you can uh, associate to the consignment an RFID, and every time that that uh, consignment pass through a toll plaza, for instance, at the customs place, that is registering to the Tangle, and then the application can consume that data and uh, help to track uh, the evolution of the package along the supply chain. So here, this is I have a consignment. This is my my consignment, and uh, I could uh, add. Uh, uh, an RFID to the to the consignment, and uh, if I add this RFID, okay, okay. 
and then I can get automatically from this web application the RFID red uh, event that has happened on the track and trace ledger API. And that event has happened with the webinar device 1639 uh, and in the location that, if you remember, we put in uh, our uh, transactions that we saw uh, uh, recently. Why? Because we have associated an RFID with our consignment. And, and of course, this application is able to, uh, to query Zebra Savannah as about the channel that is related to this RFID. And then using the JavaScript APIs of IOTA gets this data and is able to present the data in the, uh, in the interface. And, and that's an example of how this data that has been generated through the RFID readers to Savannah and then can be later consumed by other applications in the supply chains and in the supply chain. And this is, we think, a very powerful um, uh, feature. So uh, that's all that I wanted to uh, show today. Um, I hope you have, uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope you have enjoyed uh, the, uh, the demonstration. And now uh, um, 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 handing over to, um, to Antonio. Thank you very much, Jose. It was absolutely breathtaking what has already been done. I love it. Absolutely. So um, thanks again for this um, introduction. I would like also uh, to thank uh, the participants for the questions. Um, we have noted them, and uh, as I have said at the beginning, we will answer uh, the questions in a second point in time. So um, thanks also to our uh, participants for uh, listening up until this point. I would like to remember uh, for technical follow-ups uh, to register on the IOTA Stack Exchange at iota.stackexchange.com. Please remember to add the Zebra and Savannah tags to your questions. Uh, so when you add a new question to the platform at the bottom, you can add different tags so that we can uh, sort them quicker and answer to your questions. And again, for business-oriented follow-ups, please write directly to the email addresses displayed on the right-hand side of the slides. So one for the IOTA Foundation, Jens at iota.org, and the other for Zebra Savannah, alex.fryer at zebra.com. Um, thanks to Jens, Dino, and Jose for sharing valuable information with us. It has a, been a real pleasure. And I think now it's time for everyone out there to discover uh, Zebra Savannah with IOTA and start building their use cases. So thanks again, everyone. Until the next time.